Hello everyone. Hello everyone. There we go. Communication industry, well done. Um, so hi, I'm James, uh, pleased to see you all. Um, so the thing is, right, um, uh, my house got burgled just before I came to Cannes, uh, and all my computers got nicked, and my presentations too. Uh, so I'm literally standing here with my deck in the wind at the moment, um, and I'm just gonna have to wing it. So there's no, sit down, Sam. Um, the title of the presentation was Make Love Not More. The whole point of that being uh, that we need to concentrate our efforts on making fewer, better things, uh, not just simply more ads. Uh, there's, qu there's quite enough uh, ads in the world, and if anyone's kind of heard me bang on before, you'll know that my attitude towards advertising is largely that it's pollution, um, but that we can do something about that. I think that our job uh, whether you're in agency land or, or whether you're just starting out in, in creativity or technology or whatever. I think our job is to never grow old. Now, I'm, um, I was 41 recently, and, uh, and even to me that sounds terribly, terribly old. Um, I remember asking my mum how old she was when I was about seven, and she said 30, and I just thought, Jesus, you're going to be dead soon. Uh, so 41 is, is terribly old. Uh, but luckily, uh, my daughter's... Uh, they tell me that I'm the least grown up of all, the, of all their mates' parents. So at least that's something. But if our job is to never grow up, our job is to kind of be like our children. It's to create wonder in the world, to reduce the clutter that exists. Our job is to look at people's problems with new eyes and to help them solve those problems. Our job is to create work of lasting benefit not simply the next bit of work that might win us an award or the next bit of work that, that might make us famous. It's to create legacy. It's to create things that actually matter, things that are of worth and things that are bigger than all of us. So like I said, I was doing, this, I was doing a talk um, not so long ago at a university and somebody tweeted that they were, um, they were happy, to, uh, happy that it was an ad man coming to their university. And I've kind of never been so insulted in all my life, but... I have been, but I wanted to sort of say to them, look, I'm not in advertising. I don't think anyone, I think we're all in advertising to, to some degree. And I think it's a bit of a dirty word or certainly has perceptions of being a dirty word. But I think there's something we can do about it. Uh, and we can do that by simply adding another letter D to the word advertising. In my presentation, there was an awesome graphic. So imagine an awesome graphic with an extra D coming in, and you'll get the point. And that's about as clever as my deck got. So at that point, we're fine. The idea of advertising is one of contribution. The idea that instead of simply adding more sensory clutter to the world, we can use marketing budgets and briefs um, to create indispensable services that companies can actually use the budgets that they would otherwise just use to create an ad to actually create something that brings benefit to, make, to bring people delight or to simply make life easier. But first things first, who's from agency world here? You admit it. Um, who, um, who knows what the word agency means? The actual word agency, not the descriptor that we now know. So I found this out the other day. And the, bottom, the, the point is that if you want to understand someone, you have to love something of them, even if it's just a small thing. You have to love their problem, or you have to love the dilemma that they have, or you have to love, love an issue about them. You have to love their interest or their vision. The more you love of them, the more you will have understanding with them. And that is literally what agency means, to have understanding. You go back to the original Latin. I'm not that educated to do that for you right now. But if you go back to the original Latin, that's what agency means, to have understanding. So it's a massive irony to me that most agencies on the planet seem to have forgotten that it requires to have understanding of an audience. And I believe that the dynamics and protocols that exist between you and I, between you and your partners, you and your parents, you and your friends, the same exact dynamics that exist between a brand or a company and an individual. 
even an agency and a client, the dynamic is still the same. It doesn't change, although people think that it does. We are all brands, all of us, and we all know, or we should, that we're not judged by what we wear, but we're not judged by our clothes or our color uh, or anything like that. Those are uh, veneers. They add to the brand, but they're not the brand. The James brand presented here before you in monochrome um, is whatever you think it is. I think exotically cool, you think you're probably right. But similarly, the device that's in your pocket, whether that be a tablet or a mobile phone, that brand is whatever you think it is. It doesn't matter what that brand tells you it is. And how it works and how your view aligns depends on your relationship with that brand and on one very important word, authenticity. Visualize authenticity written there. How authentic something feels to you is literally the linchpin of whether or not you feel any kind of love for anything. After all the veneers have been stripped away, um, what you say you do is overshadowed by what you do do. What you do do is how authentic you are. Authenticity is the most sought after and cherished characteristic of, uh, of, all, of anything that a brand seeks. Why? Well, it's really simple, because you can't manufacture authenticity, although many people do try. You need to discover it within yourself. Of course, the problem is that as soon as we move from individuals who allegedly understand this, and we move to a brand or a company, authenticity is the first thing to suffer. Why is this? What changes? <coughs> well, I'm not a, a hippie, but I think it's everything to do with love. I think love is the thing that changes everything. Think back, if you could, to an exceptional experience that you've had, either online or offline, with a brand, service, company, whatever. You can just picture that experience in your head and how that made you feel, and how good or satisfied that experience was. I think you remember it because whatever it was, was done with absolute love. Whoever built the interface was doing it for an honorable reason. They were doing it because they loved doing it. Their heart and soul went into it. Whoever was talking to you loved what they were talking about. It seems like a really obvious thing to say, and it is. Nothing I'm going to be telling you today is earth-shatteringly new. But most of the stuff out there isn't. It's just that we all need reminding of these things. What that love comes across as is authenticity. Authenticity, for it to appear genuine, has to be genuine like a smile or a handshake. We've all been given handshakes that aren't authentic. You know, when somebody shakes your hand and looks the other way to see who's more important, that's the killer for me. We know when they're fake. And the most forward-thinking and innovative brands on the planet understand this. They understand that to be authentic, they have to behave in an authentic manner. And lots of other brands and companies on the planet also say that they understand it. And they demonstrate that they think they understand it because words like authenticity and love appear in their brand manuals. Who's ever had to read a brand manual? Who has lost their soul inside a brand manual? It's, um, my daughter refers to these things as fun sponges. They literally take the fun out of your life. Authentic is not a tick box. Love is not a metric. They are instead the intangible products of businesses that are born of passion, where passionate people exist at every single level throughout those companies. But of course, the trick is not to allow these passions to turn into a process. Passion is, and love is obviously emotional. Businesses, by their very nature, are rational, rational, emotional. This eternal balancing act is something that most people in life have had to deal with. Finding a common ground between these two things ta 